Hi there everybody and welcome back. In this short video, I'm going to take you through an introduction of the ideal gas equation and where we use it in our OCRA A-level in chemistry. This equation is also found in other chemistry A-levels, so you'll still find something useful even if you don't follow the OCRA specification, so definitely stay tuned to find out more. Now, when we're doing calculations in chemistry involving gases, we normally end up going down two different pathways. Either we're going to use the ideal gas equation, or we're going to do the arguably more straightforward and definitely more familiar calculation set that involves the molar gas volume. Now that you'll find on your OCR data sheet is 24.0 decimeters cube per mole. And we use that when we're looking at trying to calculate perhaps the moles of a gas at room temperature and pressure, which is 298 Kelvin and 100 kilopascals of pressure. In order to calculate the moles of a gas at room temperature and pressure, it's really straightforward. You just take the volume of the gas in decimeters cubed and divide it by that molar gas volume value of 24.0. And hey presto, you have your moles. In the exam, however, you're not always going to be working at room temperature and pressure. And that's where the ideal gas equation comes in because it allows us to calculate mole values of a gas along with other quantities outside of our room temperature and pressure conditions. So, what does our ideal gas equation contain? Well, it's got pressure times volume equals moles times the gas constant multiplied by temperature. You've got to be very, very careful with the ideal gas equation and its units. Otherwise, the answer for the quantity you're trying to determine when it comes out is going to be in the wrong unit, or it's going to be completely out by like a thousand or even a million. So pressure, for instance, is always going to be in pascals. A very common alternative to pascals is kilopascals, so you must make sure you know how to convert from kilopascals to pascals for your exam and then only use a pascal value in the ideal gas equation. So if you're given kilopascals, just multiply that value by a thousand. Volume. Now, different from all the other calculations you do in chemistry, volume here has got to be in meters cubed. So if they give you a centimeter cubed value in the exam, before that volume goes into the ideal gas equation, you've got to divide it by a million and decimeters cubed would need to be divided by a thousand. So please be very careful with volume as it's quite unique. There's nowhere else in the A-level where we look at meters cubed when it comes to gases. And so it either sticks out or hides. Let's make sure that it's the former. Moles. Moles is still mole and is represented here like in all the other calculations with a lowercase n. I'm going to skip R just for a moment and go straight to temperature. Now temperature is in Kelvin. Just take the degree C value if you're given one and add 273. That's all you have to do. R. Now R is the gas constant and you'll find it on your data sheet if you've got your OCR data sheet just here and you'll find it right at the bottom of the list here above the infrared spectroscopy table and it's 8.314 joules per kelvin per mole. Interestingly enough, it's the only value on the OCR data sheet that's actually quoted to four significant figures. And if you do OCR physics, it's only quoted to three significant figures on there. So again, that can help it stick out a little bit as one of those values that's perhaps a little different from the others. So that means you don't need to memorize it because it's on your data sheet and you definitely don't need to worry too much about all of those units that come with it. Well, not part of your chemistry A-level anyway. Why is it there? It's there just to make sure as a constant that all our other values and their units come out as we are expecting them to when we run through our calculations. And in the exam, the expectation from you is that you'd be able to rearrange this as a subject of any of its terms in order to calculate a required quantity. So for example, moles would be calculated as pressure times volume divided by R times T. Make sure you can rearrange the ideal gas equation as a subject of any of its terms and you'll be fine as long as you keep an eye on those units and know that you're only using it in non-room temperature and pressure conditions. 
I hope this clears up the introduction to the ideal gas equation for you. And until next time, happy revising.